Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of the Seasons How To Guide. Today we're going to talk about geos, specifically the geos that are a part of Seasons, not the car brand from General Motors. Okay, seriously, with all kidding aside, that is going to be the last geo joke uh, in this Seasons series. So, what is a geo? Well, geo is an add on mod uh, that you can add to your mod folder that is going to change all types of aspects of seasons. It's going to change, or could potentially change, the planting and harvest schedules. It's going to potentially change the crops that you can harvest and plant. Uh, it potentially can change the air and ground temperatures that you might see, not only at the start of a save game, but throughout your gameplay experience. Uh, it can change when the sun rises and the sun sets. It can also change basically how much solar radiation uh, you have with respect to your crop drying, grass drying, and various things in the different seasons. It's going to be able to change the percentage or chance of rain, uh, the percentage or chance of cloudy weather. Basically, it's going to completely change the biosphere that you have with seasons. So it is advised to only add a geo to a new save. Now while it is possible to add a geo to an existing save, it is very, very important that you take some special cautions before you do so. First precaution I would advise taking is to back up your save game before you add the geo. So to do that, very simply just take your save game folder that's in your My Games Farm Sim 2019, and then you'll have your save game folders 1 through 20. Copy the save game folder uh, for the save game that you intend to add the season's geo into and copy it somewhere else. Maybe put it on your desktop, uh, just, just put it somewhere other than the Farm Sim 2019 folder. Don't move it, make a copy. Once you've done that, then put the geo of choice into your save game folder, into your mod folder, sorry, activate it, and then fire up your game. Now, there's a couple important precautions to mention here. Only ever activate one geo at a time. You'd be advised to only ever have one geo in your mod folder at a time. That way you don't accidentally activate two different geos. I know someone is going to ask, well, what happens if you activate multiple geos? I don't know. I've never done it. Because I know better. So don't do it. Now, when should you add a geo into your map? It's best, if you are going to do it, to do it in the winter time. And do it when you don't have any crops in the ground. That is because geos will change when your planting and harvesting time frames are. So if you would go and have, let's say, wheat in the ground, and for some reason you would install a geo that doesn't allow wheat to be in the ground during winter, well, that crop is likely going to wither. So you don't want to waste time and money by planting a crop that's just going to wither away because of the geo that you added. Hence force why you back up. So best to add a geo in winter when there are no crops in the ground. That will give you a few game days for your weather to settle out. Because when you add a geo to an existing save, your temperatures aren't going to change instantly. Probably not going to change until overnight. And they might take a little bit of time to level out uh, before you're going to experience some fairly, fairly consistent ground and air temperatures. For example, if you have a very hot geo that you're adding into your save game uh, when you first fired up you might not see those hot temperatures the next day you might have some fairly warm air temperatures but your ground temps might not come up very quickly the next day after that you might see your ground temps make a pretty good jump 
might take a few game days before your temperatures settle out. So that is just some food for thought. So what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of cut and I'm going to show you guys in kind of slideshow format uh, the three geos that came out recently from the Lismus modding and compare them against the standard in-game geo kind of compare and contrast how they're different um, how they could affect your gameplay okay so here we have the base geo that is a part of seasons the mod itself so as you can see we have our typical planting schedule of our cereal crops our wheat barley oats and canola in the spring all at 41 or 43 degrees Fahrenheit uh, we can also then replant them back in late summer through late autumn and we could possibly harvest them as early as late summer all the way through the end of early winter we have sunflowers which we can plant at the start of mid spring and we have to pretty much have those completely in the ground ready to go by the start of summer and then we have a harvest schedule of early autumn on our sunflowers and we can carry that all the way through the end of early winter for our corn and soybeans we need 45 degrees fahrenheit now i'm in the u.s we deal with fahrenheit so i have fahrenheit here I don't understand Celsius, so that is why I have that. But at any rate, we have soybeans and corn that we can start planting in late autumn. And we have to have those planted by the end of early summer. And we're not going to be able to harvest those until the start of mid-autumn. And we have again through the end of early winter to get those out of the ground. Then we have the rest of the crops that pretty much follow the general consistency of the crops above we have to have them planted in spring and we can start harvesting them in early autumn and we have until the end of early winter to get those harvested now let's take a look at the whales geo so the whales geo now you'll see has slightly different harvesting and planting schedules uh, this is based around the whales region of the uk uh, we can expect a slightly warmer climate than the base geo but we can also expect a wetter climate than the base seasons geo you'll see that we have 41 degrees and 43 degrees again for our cereal crops or wheat barley oats and canola but you'll notice that on the first day of spring we already have white temperatures here that means we already have a ground temp ready for those to be planted we didn't have warm enough ground temps in the base seasons geo. Just like the base seasons geo, we have all spring to get those cereals into the ground. And just like the base seasons geo, we can start potentially harvesting those at the start of late summer. But you'll notice that we can also start planting them in late summer, but we actually can plant them all the way through the end of middle winter uh, for our wheat barley and our canola oats on the other hand we have to have done planted by the end of early winter if we look at sunflowers you'll see that they pretty much follow the same schedule as the base geo as does our soybeans and corn uh, but you'll you see that there are some subtle differences as we look down here at our potatoes and sugar beets uh, we actually have the ability to plant those in mid-winter. We didn't have that capability in the base geo. So next up, we're going to take a look real quickly at the Midwest geo. So the first thing you're going to notice here with the Midwest geo is that it looks fairly different than the other two geos that we looked at, which are really just variants of UK weather. You're going to see that wheat, barley, and canola now require a ground temp of 43 degrees Fahrenheit in order to germinate, whereas the other two geos had them at 41 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll also see that since they are white, first day of early spring, we have ground temps 
that are capable to support and germinate uh, those cereal crops. You see that we do have the ability to plant those all the way through the end of spring, but we also then have the potential of being able to harvest them as early as the first day of summer. Now this of course would not be crop that you plant the first day of spring. This is going to be wheat that you would have planted the previous autumn. You can see we can plant as early as the first day of late summer and all the way through the end of autumn and we can harvest from the first day of summer all the way through the last day of early winter for our wheat, barley, oats, and canola. What does this mean? This means you have the potential to double crop your fields. So let's take a look. So we could plant wheat, let's say in mid-autumn, okay? And that would grow all the way through winter, all the way through spring the next year, and we would probably be harvesting our wheat in early summer the following year. So we can clear that and get it out of the way. What does that mean? Well, let's look down here at our soybeans and our corn. We can plant soybeans as early as the first day of mid-spring, but we can actually plant, continue planting our soybeans all the way through the end of middle summer. So if we can get our wheat off the field in early or mid-summer, we could flip that field, we could get soybeans in it, and then have a realistic chance of getting those beans off the field in late autumn or early winter the same year to get two crops out of the same field the same year. Now you really got to be hustling in order to do that, and the weather really needs to cooperate with you but it is a possibility. Double cropping is definitely not a possibility in the Wales Geo or the base Geo. You'll see this is also the first Geo that we've seen that allows us to plant cotton. Now we do have to get to a ground temp of 61 degrees Fahrenheit, fairly warm ground temperature, uh, but assuming we have that ground temperature in late spring, we can put uh, cotton seed in the ground, if you will, and we have the ability to plant cotton all the way through the end of mid-summer, and then we would have the potential to harvest cotton in autumn and the early winter time frame. We don't have sugarcane listed here. We'll take a look at all of these geos and take a look at sugarcane specifically when we get back in game here in a moment. Now, the last geo that I want to talk about is the last official geo that got recently released by Realismus, and that is the Snowy Lands geo. And this geo is kind of just a fun in the sun geo. If you just want to play with some snow, uh, then you would fire this up on a new save. You'll see that there are no planting um, schedules for any crop listed here. Poplar is listed as basically being harvestable. Uh, but you can't plant it at any point in time during the year, so that really doesn't serve much of a purpose. Uh, this is just all about wanting to play in the snow, uh, experience snow. If you've never been lucky enough to have a bad winter, well, here you go. You can fire this up and have yourself winter year-round, uh, because what we're going to see when we fire this up in the game and fast forward through an entire year, we're going to see that it is cold pretty much all the time and we are going to get a whole lot of snow. So with that, we're going to jump back in game. We're going to run through a year, take a look at the ground temps, take a look at the air temps and everything in all of these geos, including the base geo, and just see how things differ from one geo to the next with respect to maybe um, sunset, sunrise, the average light duration on any given geo, on any given duration of a day, and basically the kind of temperatures we may see in spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Okay, so we're back in game, and we are here at Ravenport. Once again, I've got this on three-day seasons, just for the sake of brevity, and we have the base in-game geo. So as you can see, first day of early spring, we have a ground temp of 39 degrees and an air temp of... 
31 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 8.33 in the morning. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to fly through an entire year in fast forward. We're going to pause it every evening to basically use the sleep trigger to sleep through the night, allow seasons to sync back up, and basically see how our temperatures, see how our weather reacts during the year. Then we're going to compare that to the Wales Geo. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the same thing with the Midwest. And, well, Snowy Lands, we're going to do just a few days of that just so you get the gist. Let's take a look here at our planting. So you can see we are indeed in the base game geo. Take a look at our weather forecast. Again, we are three-day seasons. So this is early spring, mid-spring, late spring, early, mid late summer and early autumn let's see what the estimated temperatures are going to be like let's see how it really works out see in early autumn it got dark fairly quick maybe around uh, 7 p.m. Go ahead and sleep about 12 hours. See when the sun comes up here. So we got daylight around 7 a.m., maybe a little bit beforehand in mid spring. 41 degree air and ground temps. Sun is a bit higher now than it was in early spring. And it got later, much later much well not much later but it did get later on in the day let's go sleep 10 hours this time since we did go a little bit later into the day now in late spring we are at 41 degree air temp and 43 degree ground temp in the morning See that air temp climbing. And it's getting dark fairly late in the day. 50 degree air temp, 43 degree ground temp. Eight thirty, and we still have a fair bit of light outside. And we are in summer. Fifty degrees Fahrenheit, fifty-two degree ground temp in the morning. Take a look, see how those temperatures change throughout the day. It's almost 9 p.m. and we have a fair bit of sunlight still going on here. Here we are, midsummer, 48 degree air temp, 54 degree ground temp in the morning. See that air temp climbing fairly quickly into the afternoon. 68 degrees in the evening, right before 9 p.m. Now we're in late summer. 54 degrees, 55 degree ground temp. Sixty-one degree air temp. It's starting to get dark a little bit earlier now. Now we are in early autumn. 
sun has been up for quite a while already. It's dark fairly soon now compared to uh, previously. 66 degree, 54, 55 degree ground temp. Made it back to mid-autumn now. Kind of cloudy there. We can see the sun flying around. Starting to cool off ground temperature-wise. Late autumn, it is still dark. It is almost 8 a.m., but it is still dark outside. See how low the sun is in the sky now. How early it gets dark. It is now winter time. Eight AM it is barely dawn. See how low that sun is in the sky. It is pretty dark already at five PM. It is pretty much pitch black at eight eight, 8 PM. Snow, lucky enough to see snow in uh, in this geo. We have frozen ground. Got some snow on the ground. 28 degrees Fahrenheit, 25 degree ground temp. We have late winter, almost 9 a.m. Look how low that sun is in the sky as it goes across. A little bit higher now because we're getting into spring. Right, and then we'll go one more day back into early spring. Almost noon, early spring, 42 degree air temp, 30 degree ground temp. Now that is the base geo with seasons. Now we're going to boot this back up with the whales geo and just see what a typical year is going to look like kind of fast forward through time. All right, so we are back now with the whales geo activated first day of early spring, 8.33 a.m., pretty much where we started with the base geo, 36 degree ground temp, or 43 degree ground temp, sorry, 36 degree air temperature. Let's take a look at that planting schedule. You can see indeed we are in the whales geo because we do have some subtle differences in the planting and harvesting schedule. You can see we still can't do sugarcane and we still can't do cotton because those are two crops that are definitely not grown in the whales region of the UK. We can immediately start planting our wheat, barley, oats, and canola because we already have ground temps that will support those. All we need to do is get our fields ready to rock and roll. We're once again on three-day season, so here we are in early spring. We have mid-spring. We have late spring, early, mid, late summer, and early autumn in our forecast. So let's just go ahead and once again fly through a year and see how things look a little bit different with the whales geo. We can expect a little warmer weather. 
a lot more rain percentages. And uh, as a result, we may or may not uh, be able to get certain crops harvested because of all of that rain. Here we have our first day. It is already 53 degrees uh, by the end of our first day in early spring. 43 degree ground temp. We are morning of our second day. We have wet crop. We must have had rain overnight or a very, very wet dew. The sun is a lot higher in the sky, just like it was in the other geo. Forty-four air temp, thirty-nine degree ground temp. So our ground temps have fallen since we first started this map. Interesting. Rain in the forecast. We are late spring. Raining 43 and 43 degrees respectively. Sun is awful high in the sky. Get dark around 9.30 p.m. We are into summer, 50 degree ground temp. So let's go back here and look at our planting schedule. So we have until the end of early summer to get our soybeans and corn in the ground. 50 degree ground temp. Let me tell you a little story as we fast forward. So I used the Wales Geo in Farm Sim 17 when I was doing a 24 day seasons play on a map called Churn Farms. I planted, I don't know how many fields, probably five to seven fields of soybeans and corn. I planted them before I had 50 degree ground temp because it was it was getting toward the end of the planting schedule. I was seeing ground temps at 48, 49 degrees. It was not getting any warmer. So I basically hedged my bets and I said, well, let's put the crop in the ground. I never got 50 degree ground temp and I lost all of those fields of crop because the ground temperature just never got to where I needed it to be. Let that be a lesson for you guys. You hedge your bets and plant early, you might lose crop. Even more so in 19 when we have things like crop moisture ground moisture and other factors involved other than just simply planting when we were supposed to. Here we are mid summer. Temps are getting up here for the seventies. Definitely getting later at the peak of our daytime. At this point, we can probably expect our days to uh, get shorter and shorter. <coughs> Sorry about that. So, it's late summer. Made it into autumn. See how the temperatures might compare compared to the base geo. They're not going to be too far off because we're just talking about two different regions of the UK. But there are subtle differences for sure. You can definitely see that we are getting more rain than we did in the first year as we flew through the base geo. And 
late autumn. How late the sun comes up, how early the sun drops. <laughs> Move into winter. Uh, we may or may not see snow in this particular geo. Just given the fact that it is just a hair bit warmer than the base game Geo. 36 and 36. Also means we may never see frozen ground. Which in theory would allow us to do field work throughout the entire summer, should we so wish. Yeah, look, still 36 degree ground temp going into late winter. We're not really seeing temperatures below the ground temp. We're not expecting really the ground temp to fall too terrible much. And we're in late winter and our ground temp is 39 degrees. Fifty degree, thirty-nine degree ground temp. And once again, we're moving into our second year of early spring. We have a little bit cooler spring than we did the first time around, 37 and 37, but we never saw frozen ground. We we're basically able to do anything we wanted to do other than plant all the way through our winter schedule. All right, let's load up. The U.S. Midwest Geo, we should see a fair different bit of weather than we've already seen in the first two. And welcome back, guys. We are now in the U.S. Midwest Geo. Now you can see once again it is 8.32 a.m. this time. We have 40 degree air temp and 45 degree ground temperature. Got a little bit of a light rain going on here in the early springtime. Let's once again look at the calendar. You can see a drastically different schedule of planting and harvest than what we have seen in the previous two geos. We do have the ability, if, big if, it gets warm enough, we do have the ability to plant cotton, and we have the ability to harvest cotton, uh, but we do not have the ability to plant or harvest sugarcane. We just don't grow sugarcane in the U.S. Midwest. Uh, so that is not a viable option. Let's do the same thing we've done for the other two geos and get to for fast forwarding. You may have noticed that the sun looked an awful high in the sky for early spring as compared to the other two geos. Uh, like I said in the uh, kind of the intro uh, driving around segment, uh, the geo can dictate uh, the latitude uh, that the uh, the geo is representing, uh, which is going to affect the height of the sun uh, as it traverses the sky throughout the various seasons. It's also going to affect when the sun comes up and when the sun goes down uh, with respect to the time of day. If you look here at 7.30 in the morning, it's spring, and well, the sun is way over there. Made its way over the mountains. 52 degree ground temp already. It's spring. Temps up in the 70s by mid afternoon. Our late spring, it's 7.30 in the morning. The sun has been up for quite a while.
9 p.m. Starting to get a little dark. Made our way into summertime. 64 degree ground temp. What do we need again for our cotton? 61. We are in the cotton planting region. 8 o'clock. Look how high that sun is already. 74, 70, 80 degrees. Starts to cool off. Sixty-eight degree ground temp. That temperature is something that probably is likely not heard of in the UK based geos. Eighty-one, eighty-three, eighty-four air temp. Seventy-nine degrees at eight thirty PM. Is at nine thirty PM? Seventy three degree ground temperature, sixty eight degree air temperature, eight thirty in the morning, late summer, ninety degrees, ninety degree summer temperature for late summer. I have to say that is still a fairly, fairly not mild, but a uh, a cooler summer than even the uh, the region of the U.S. that I am used to. Early autumn. Starting to cool down a bit, but we still have 61 degree ground temps. Mid-autumn, ground temps have dropped to 52 degrees. Remember, we're a three-day season, so some of these temp swings are, are to the drastic side per day because of the fact that each game day is, in essence, a month's worth of of temperature change. Late autumn. The sun is definitely lower in the sky during early winter. Well, fairly early into the day. Frozen ground, 28 degree ground temp. And we're not guaranteed to have snow, but we could. Fairly early into the day. Actually warmed up a little bit into late winter, which is the pseudo equivalent of March. Guys, a little bit higher. Sun's a little bit higher in the sky. And then we are back to early spring. Didn't see any snow this time around. With the Midwest Geo, but trust me, that is not an every year occurrence. Again, we're 8.45 a.m. early spring, 39 degree ground temp. Not quite as warm as it was the first time around, but that sun is awful high in the sky for early spring 
compared to some of the other geos that we've already looked at. So we're going to boot this up one more time, show off snowy lands just for funsies, and see how the temperatures and the sun looks with that one. And welcome to the frozen tundra. We are with the snowy lands geo. You can see we already have snow on the ground. Uh, it is 8.32 in the morning and the sun, well, a little bit of the sun is thinking about peaking up over the hills there. 14 degree ground temp, minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit air temperature. Clearly we got ourselves some frozen ground. Once again, you'll see that there's no planting, there's no harvesting, there's no farming going on. This is just for the fun in the sun. Snowy, snowy weather. We have early spring. Mid spring, late spring, early mid, late summer. Look at that, our average air temperatures are going to make it oh, almost out of freezing by the time we get to uh, mid summer. Maximum temperature is right there at the freezing threshold. So it is all about the chill factor. We even see the sun over the horizon. I don't know, it's cloudy. Going into mid spring. Ah, oh, there's the sun peeking its way up. 10 degree ground temps. Late spring. Oh, it's it's a blustery. It's getting kind of hot in here. 16 degree Fahrenheit. The sun is midday, fairly high in the sky. 12 degree ground temps. Still haven't seen any snow. Actual snow falling. Rather interesting. Well, it's summertime here in snowy lands. 14 degree ground temp, 23 degrees air temp. Making a, oh, we're over freezing on our air temp. See, that is not having much effect at all on our ground temps. So, 10.30 and we still have sunlight. Eleven twenty-four. It finally got dark. Seven twenty-five. Sun's already fairly up high in the sky. Sometimes if you fast forward for too long, it, uh, look at that, 3.28 in the morning, late summer, and the sun is starting to peep up over the horizon. That's how just, just high up in the uh, latitude range we're talking here. We'll go one more day just to uh, just to show you how things are progressing. Finally, some snow. Early autumn. Sun is definitely lower in the skies. And now it is 7 a.m. in the morning, mid-autumn. We're back to it being fairly dark in the morning. There we go. So, 
that is basically what the geo is how it works and how to use it so let's summarize here before we close out for the day so we have a uk based geo that is included standard in seasons uh, we also have the ability to add custom weather by dropping in an add-on geo that will trump the base geo geos can provide us with different weather conditions so we can have different ground temps and air temps through all of the various seasons we can have different rain percentages different percentages are chance of cloudy weather uh, we can have a different harvest and plant schedule we can have even different crops that are either allowed to be planted or not allowed to be planted based on the particular geo and in the case of the Midwest geo uh, we have the ability to double crop a field uh, that we can't do with any other geo that is currently released I expect over time we're gonna see more and more geos come out with more and more diverse planting and harvesting options definitely see a South American geo uh, which is going to have much much hotter temperatures that will allow us to plant um, sugarcane uh, in 17 there was an Australian geo that basically flipped spring and summer on its back end and uh, summer was spring and spring was summer uh, basically how it is south of the equator so that was an interesting complete 180 from what all the other existing geos were out there so let me know in the questions in the comments what do you think of the various geos that are out now uh, what geos that were out in 17 are you looking forward to seeing in 19 and until next time happy farming be sure to like subscribe and click that notification bell